Hi, I'm calling. I'm a citizen, and mm-hmm. I'm considering filing for my mother, petition for my mother okay. in Jamaica. I want to know what are all the forms associated with it and the, like, the price that it would cost, like total price altogether. Okay. Um, you, you only need one form to start off with, um, and, okay. and it's the I-130 visa petition. And I-130. I-130, and you're going to pay the immigration service $420. Okay. Okay. After you get the I-130 approved, they're going to, they're going to, National Visa Center will send you some more forms, affidavits of support, DS-230, some other forms, and you will have to pay their fee as well, which is $491 in total. Okay, cool. Okay. Now, usually how long does the whole process take to... If you, if you do it right, it should take less than a year. Less than a year. Now, I didn't file for my taxes for last year as yet. Is that going to be a problem? Yeah, because you have to give an affidavit of support. So if you, um, okay, that would... so you probably need someone to give a second affidavit unless you have it on extension or something. Okay. All right. All right, so I'll do that. So even if I didn't file for my tax, as long as I have someone else on Correct. the affidavit then you're okay. support, it will be okay. Then you're okay, yes. Okay. Quick, quick question. I've married before, right? Right. And then, and then I, I divorced. Uh-huh. But I want to, can I marry about that same person that I divorced to, to sponsor? Wait, so let me get this straight. You, ma- you were married to somebody, you got divorced, you married somebody else, you got your green card, and now you want to turn back and marry the first wife. No, no, I didn't marry to get a green card, but I divorced her before, so I, I want to marry that. Um, you know what? You know what? There, in life, uh, as long as you can show that all of your marriages were bona fide and there was no immigration fraud, then that's what you're claiming on the radio. Then absolutely, you can. Crazier things have happened in life. I've seen crazier things happen. Uh, people are allowed to fall in, out of love, and back in love. And it's and you're just going to have to. You're certainly going to need a lawyer because there's going to be a lot of questions asked about uh, the validity of your second marriage and um, you know things of that nature. But certainly, is it plausible? It's absolutely plausible. But I would suggest you come in and, and speak to me about it before you do anything. Yes. How are you doing, Brad? Good. Um, my question is: um, I'm a U.S. citizen, right. and I, I. Um, have a child um, out of the country. Um, is that child an uh, automatic U.S. citizen? Was When the child was born, were you a U.S. citizen? Yes. And were you living in the United States for 10 years in any legal status prior to the child's birth? Not necessarily as a U.S. citizen. Yes. Okay, then that child's an automatic U.S. citizen. All you have to prove is that you were legally living in the United States for 10 years after the age of 14, and... Um, when that child was born, you are a U.S. citizen, and then that child's an automatic U.S. citizen. What you need to do is bring proof that you were in the United States living uh, in the United States legally for 10 years prior to the child's birth, and at the time of the child's birth, you were a U.S. citizen, um, and you can bring that right down to the U.S. Embassy in whatever country the child is in, and you can apply for that child's U.S. passport right there on the spot. And, you know, probably the best thing to... The best, the best thing to do is bring your citizenship and bring, you know, your tax returns for the last 10 years or, you know, sometimes Social Security. What's also a good, good way to prove that you were in the United States is, you know, you get that letter from Social Security every year and it says how much you paid in taxes for that year and how much went to Social Security. You know, save that letter and bring that. I, I, I'm going to save some time. Could I, could I, I mean, when they give me time, could I, could I sign up? What do you mean? I got they, a green card. You're gonna get. Can you sign up for what? I don't, I don't understand the question. All right, I'm. I'm. All right, I'm going to a trial. I mean, you know, I couldn't plead guilty to the trial because they're going to be deported. But right. still, they're still trying me. And if, you know, if I'm getting time, it's going to be like three to twelve or three to twenty-five. Right. Five to twenty-five. Right. If if if, if I end up getting time, could I would it, um, renounce myself and give my card in and leave the country? No, they're still gonna. They're still gonna make you serve the punishment, and then they're gonna deport you. It's a tough decision to make. Okay, sir. All right. So is like, and I don't mean if it's possible, I could just take off and leave. <laughs> Well, anything's possible. I mean, I, I can't advise you, you know, to, to run. I understand. Okay, um, but, but, you know, because certainly uh, there are treaties between, you know, the United States and many countries, you know, extradition treaties. And, you know, if they want you, they'll, they'll arrest you okay. and bring you back. Okay. Um, now, you have, you, what I would suggest you do, okay, because this is one of those situations where 
you don't your immigration problem is going to be resolved in the criminal criminal defense context meaning that you don't need a great immigration lawyer you need a great criminal defense attorney um, and what I would suggest you do before you go to trial and I'm going to tell you this in all in all sincerity it may, it may sound like I'm trying to sell you something but the reality is the lawyer who works for me Michael Biniakowicz who runs my criminal yes, defense who, I'm sorry. Been in there before. You've been, you've, been there before. you've been there to see him, okay? Because he has, yeah. he has won ninety, if not ninety-five percent of his trials that he's tried in the last. Uh, if it's not ninety, it's really damn close. Um, in the last two or three years, I mean, every time he goes to trial, he comes back and wins just about every time. Um, not that, not that you know, past success guarantees what's going to happen to you, but but he's had a very good success rate so far. So if you are going to go to trial, I would strongly urge you to just come back and have another consultation with him. Mike, I have a case that I have to go back to the immigration on um, June 13th, right. 2011. And this is my two-year anniversary. The two-year anniversary is actually September 13, 2011. Okay. So you've got to remove the conditions of your permanent residence. Right. Okay. And have you filed the I-751 yet? You have not. Okay. So what is your question? So my question is, how do I get the I-751 form? How do you get it? Um, how do I get it? You can, you can do it one of three ways. If you have a computer and a printer, you can go to USCIS.gov and go to the form section and print it out. You can... Um, you can call the customer service number at immigration, one I don't, which I don't remember off the top of my head, and they will mail you out the forms. You can go wait online at immigration and speak to an immigration officer and spend four or five hours waiting online or whatever it is, and you can, you know, they'll give you the forms. Or the fourth way is you can come see me and I take care of everything. Okay. All right. There's only one that any document that you have that you can prove that you and your spouse live together. That is what you need. Okay? That's your tax returns, bank statements, credit card bills, insurance bills, pictures of you together with friends and family, and whatever else you can think of. Uh, if you have children together, uh, whatever you can think of that you can uh, prove that you and your spouse live together because that's all this is about. It's all about, you know, you know, the immigration service wanting a second crack at interviewing you to make sure that you didn't commit fraud, that this is a real marriage that you entered into. Okay. Okay. Now, my next question is, these, this form, along with all the supporting documents, should be submitted to the immigration Correct. on or before June 13th? Correct. 2011? Correct. On or before, on or before, on or before whatever the, the end date of your green card is. You have, 90 day, you have a 90-day window. You have to look at your green card. I don't have your green card in front of me. So you look at your green card, and if your green card end expires in September of 2011, then it's got to be 90 days before September 2011. If it's June, then 90 days before June, whatever it is. Okay, the green card is September 13, 2011. So the 90 days before, 90 days before that. Okay. Not 91 days, because if it's 91 days, they're going to reject it. Okay. If I submit it before 90 days, it's... Yes, it's going to be rejected. Oh, so it has to be on the 90th day. Or before. Or before. Well, I mean, oh yeah, well, I mean, but any day between day 90 to day 1, leading up to the expiration. Okay. All right? But let me, Yeah, but you know what? I, I have to get to the, I have to get to other calls because it's not fair to the other people who have been on hold. But what I would suggest you do, yeah, it's 90 days before September. If your green card expires in September, count 90 days, any time in that period. Not nine, not, um, so it would be July or August you would file the application. Hi, yes. I, I have a question. Yes. Um, I have filed for a fiancé visa, like, mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. And um, at the end of the visa, like, before we got the response, I uh, withdrew the application for, you know, personal reasons. So... Now we got back together, and I'm actually, you know, expecting a child. So they're going to put me on high risk, and I can't work or anything. So we're trying to figure out what's the best way for him to get over here quicker. He's in Jamaica. File the fiancé visa as quickly as possible. 
Okay, but um, what about that emergency visa? Well, Do you know anything about that? Well, it's not an emergency visa, but you know, if you, you can try to apply, no. you can try to apply for oh. a visitor's visa for some sort of uh, humanitarian or medical reason. But I, I think they, they're going to give them a hard time, you know, getting the visa. I would rather just, you know, let them file the fiance visa, get them here. Okay. Well, what about with me having this problem? Like, is there any way, like, expedited? Because I looked up the emergency visa and they say if you have like a relative well, well, well yeah I mean you can uh, you can apply they're not going to give him a fiance visa they're going to give him a visitor's visa and then they're going to prevent him from adjusting his status here they're going to make him go back to Jamaica and then he's going to wait you know nine months for a fiance visa to come back again so um, oh, if he comes here on you, when, you, visa, when you come here they're, 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 correct because they're going to mark something in the passport that he's ineligible to adjust because he's already gone, oh. he's already shown his intention of remaining in the United States. He's going to have a big, pro assuming they even give him the visa, he's going to have a big problem. I think getting the visa, but assuming they even give him the visa, I I think they're going to mark his passport up and and restrict what he can do when he's here. So it's just going to you know send him back home after the baby's born to pick up oh, his green card. Okay, so that's that's my opinion. So, so I would rather the, I think it's just okay, best just. So if he comes here, during that time, if it, it, it's possible, can we follow the fiance visa and then they can adjust it that way or he still has to go back? Well, he would have to go back to pick up his fiance visa. I mean, if he comes up on oh. a visitor's visa, presumably you would just marry him. I, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing, you know, maybe they give him the visitor's visa and he's, he is allowed to adjust his status here. I just, I think... That's what would happen. I think you're going to have a hard time getting the visitor's visa. They're, they're, going, to, they're going to say, you know, you have a high-risk pregnancy. Um, that doesn't mean you need your fiancé at your bedside file the fiancé visa. I think they're going to be cruel. Oh. Okay. All right, so okay. I would just file the fiancé visa as quickly as possible. My green card expired in 07, right? Right. And I, I filed in 08 for my, uh, my citizenship. Right. And, and I have uh, I got arrested I got arrested and for like a violation and they have been there for six months. So when I went to explain to the citizen people, mm -hmm. the lady set an appointment with me and she didn't show up. So because she didn't show up now they end up um denying me my citizenship. Um I'm I'm thinking of filing um, for my green card, but um, what do you think um, is the right thing to do? Sorry. How long have you had your green card? I, I came here in 97. I have it from 97. It so, expired in 07. So I don't understand. What lady didn't show up? The, you know, when you inter the person that, the lady that interviewed me at the Citizen Bureau. Right. She set an appointment for me to bring some other stuff, like... My tax. Oh, I see. And then you brought it back, um, and she says I, she, you brought it back, and she I, says she never received it. I, I brought it, and right. she wasn't there. Right now, it, I bet okay. you, I bet, I bet you, this happened in Garden City, New York, right? Huh? Did this happen in Garden City? Yeah, in the city. Oh, in in New York City, what, Federal what Plaza. Happened? Yes, in the city. What okay. Let me go a little further. What I had left my paperwork with 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 somebody. Right. Because he told me to leave it with him because he said she was in a, a train, you know, she wasn't there. Right. So I said to him, oh, she said, I'll call me today. Oh, she's not here today. Right. So he said, leave it with him. So when I leave it with him, I got a letter in the mail that it denied me because of that case that was put off for six months. And I came to explain to her that I couldn't get the disposition, but I have everything else that she asked for. I think what you should do is you should make an appointment to come see me. Let me take a look at this case, and, let, and then I'll tell you. Um, certainly, if it, was, if it was dismissed, you can renew your green card, but I'll let you know whether it's worthwhile to do your citizenship again.